right, here we go. We're always going to have to chat about it because when you do walk out of WWE, doesn't matter who you are, or when you do it, it becomes massive news. Stone Cold Steve Austin, Brock Lesnar, Pac, Mustafa Ali. And I know there are some variants in there, but when a wrestler stands up towards the machine, boom, away we go. And the reason I threw Mustafa Ali's name in there too is because he recently was in a similar situation to where many wrestling fans started to go, why, why are wrestlers so unhappy? So when you ask the question why, I take my hand, I slap my head, and I say, here's why. In case you don't know the story, let me catch you up quickly because I don't want you to be left behind. But on a recent episode of Raw, the main event was supposed to be a number one contender match to decide who was going to take on Bianca Belair at the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. It was going to be Becky Lynch taking on Oscar, taking on Nikki Ash, taking on New Drop, taking on Sasha Banks who was also going to be taken on Naomi. So understandably, when Naomi and Sasha Banks heard about this, they went to Vince McMahon and they were like, well, what's going on here? I thought we had a little thingamajig going. Why are we going off in a different direction? Now, at one point, it sounds like this all did come together and we made plans so that Sasha and Naomi would not interact when they were in the ring, even though there is another rumor that despite all that, it was still going to be Naomi versus Bianca Belair at the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, excuse me, premium live event, and that Sasha Banks would return to SmackDown and go after Ronda Rousey. This still irked the pair, however, because as other sources have stated, in February, they were both promised big WrestleMania feuds. They were then put together as a tag team. They then decided to make the best of it. They won the championships, they got over, they sold a bunch of merchandise, so probably thought, well, there you go, you gave us lemons, and now we've made lemonade. Why don't we build this into a palace? I think that's really fair too. Like, you wouldn't call it the greatest thing in the world, but given how much rope any WWE superstar is allowed to have, I think they picked this ball and they ran with it. And bam, from nowhere you're told, no, we're not going to do that anymore because you wanted to go left and we wanted to go right. And aside from the obvious, this brings up another problem, specifically wrestlers' momentum. Because how many times have we seen this before? You're a rocking and you're a rolling and then you get injured, you vanish off TV and within a few weeks, you ain't even an afterthought because out of sight, out of mind. That's why people try to fight through being hurt in order to stay on Raw or SmackDown because they don't want their opportunity to go away. Sometimes you get that one sole single opportunity and then poof, it vanishes and now you are just a sad panda. I mean, I can't even imagine what that does to your insides, but going back to this situation, it then kind of seems to have transpired that everything was okay, but then a producer or an agent didn't like it and they went and stooged off. Anyway, the brilliant end all was Sasha Banks and Naomi took their women's tag team titles, they gave them to John Laurinaitis and they went, see you pal, and they left halfway through Raw. So they just decided they weren't going to do it, hence queuing the madness, and I do understand that. But what's really crazy is that this is happening all over the shop at the moment. I mean, in the last few days, as I make this video, we've had the Sasha Banks and Naomi situation. There's all these rumors that Tony Khan and MJF may have come to an impasse. And if you follow Kota Bushi on Twitter, he has taken his accusation gun and he is firing bullets at New Japan. I mean, we won't get into it here because we don't have the time, but it is safe to say he isn't happy. And if these two can actually work this out, I will be absolutely stunned. Because some of the things he has said, if they're true, what the flub is going on? Let's also take a moment and not pretend that this is anything new because it's not. And it's just the fact that the current world we live in has social media at the heart of it. So as soon as anything does drop, it can be here, there and everywhere in around about 47 seconds. Like if we do go back to 2002 when Stone Cold Steve Austin walked out, it still had that kind of a buzz, but we didn't have the technology to let it explode in the way that this one did. I mean, WWE didn't release a statement within the hour saying, oh, Stone Cold Steve Austin upset our scripted programming. And while over the next few weeks and months they did take shot after shot at him, it wasn't like you live in the United Kingdom, you go to bed thinking, well, I wake up in the morning and I watch Monday Night Raw. And then when your eyes do open, and all of a sudden you look at your phone and go, well, there's a whole thread here. I'm going to have to walk down a road. The other part of this is the landscape. While it is really hard to get out of your contract these days, I bet one of the reasons Mustafa Ali said, well, actually, I'm not very happy here, I'd like to leave, is because in 2000, 
2022, it's no longer WWE or the indie. I mean, AEW has created a new old way to do business or an old new way. You choose whichever one you want. And if you are a professional wrestler of note, you can bet your ass that the other company probably wants to try and pick you up. I mean, do you think All Elite Wrestling doesn't want Sasha Banks? Come on, man. They would do a backflip. This does put some kind of power in your hand, though, because you don't have to sacrifice your level of stardom just to be creatively satisfied. Like, we go back to Christian Cage, who has told this story before. When he left WWE in the mid-2000s to go to TNA, sometimes people would see him and go, oh, did you retire from sports entertainment? Because TNA just didn't have that big of an audience, so people just thought he'd gone away. So the gulf between total non-stop action and WWE was huge, but it is not the same when it comes to WWE and AEW. Now, the former still the big dog, the former is still the king, but you are more than able to make a bunch of money and be really smart and go, oh, maybe we can do this and maybe we can do that at the other brand. And this is why all of a sudden, you start standing up for yourself. And I have talked about this a lot, but it's why this so-called war is so important to begin with, because you can have far more control over your careers because you are not trapped. Like when Brock Lesnar decided, I don't want to do this wrestling thing no more in 2004, WWE were a little bit worried about New Japan and actually triggered an entire lawsuit, but don't worry about it. But do you think they felt the same about that as they do someone like All Elite Wrestling or WCW back in the day? Of course not. It's why when someone like Ali does ask to be released, he gets told, no, you can just get home, we'll freeze your contract, and you can sit it out because they don't want somebody else to go across the battle lines, even if it's just from a perception point of view. But it's why they were so desperate to sign Cody Rhodes, because it sent out the message going, okay, well, some of our guys are going to go there, but damn it, look at this, some of their guys are also going to come here too. So wrestlers have always been unhappy, but now they can be more boisterous with it. I mean, it certainly sounds like Chris Jericho was this way in the late 90s, when they wouldn't give him anything, so he went, okay, fine, I'm going to the WWE. With. And when Stone Cold did decide to take his ball and went home, he knew if worse came to the worst, he would have an entire movie career waiting for him. And believe you me, at the time, I bet others would have followed him if World Championship Wrestling still existed. But the truth of the matter by then, I'm dead. Ultimately, you do want to keep your talent happy, and it does kind of sound like Sasha Banks and Naomi had a point. If you have invested three months of your time and life into something, and somebody just wants to push it to one side, of course you're going to put your hand up and quite ironically ask, why? But if nothing else, it's going to leave you questioning what's going to happen in the future. What can I invest in? What can't I invest in? What can I trust? What can't I trust? Because I've already gone all the way out for you. And now you just telling me that I suck. I mean, compare it to where you work now. You were told you have to work on the 2023 budget, so you do that for a month. And just when you're about to present it, they go, oh, sorry, Steve, you now have to go into the HR department. So you go and do that, and then you're in production, then you're in finance. One day, you're probably going to go to work absolutely shaking because you're like, well, I have no idea what they're going to tell me. So your confidence is going to be shot, and maybe just on one Monday night, you decide, you know what, flub it. I'm going home. And it is always good to caveat this stuff by saying we have no idea what has actually happened because we weren't in the room. But just remember that professional wrestlers are human beings. They have highs, they have lows, they have ups, they have downs. And sometimes they get sad, and sometimes they get anxious, and they react according to that. I mean, the only real reason we're talking about it is because they are celebrities, and wrestling, Twitter, love stuff like this, and jumps right on it. And I totally get that too. It is a major story, but never forget the human element because we don't know how they're feeling. It is crazy though, right? I mean, if you are a wrestling fan right now, you have no idea what's gonna happen tomorrow. I mean, maybe you wake up and Tony Khan says, I bought WWE and I'm the new Vince McMahon. Or Tony Khan rips off his Mission Impossible type mask and he is Vince McMahon. We have gone to the point where I would just do emoji shrug and say, yeah, I should have seen it coming. What a mad, mad place we've arrived in. Now, please do leave a comment. And honestly, let me know what you think about all of this, but be nice. Don't be rude. Sometimes it goes crazy down there with these things. Remember to be respectful. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Head over to whatculture.com where you can read yourself some articles and keep up to date with this news. Make sure you come say hello on social media. We'll also update you there. And we're going to have a lot of videos about it. I know you're probably like me. You just want information, information. We'll give you as much as we've got. My name is Simon War Culture. Thank you for joining me as always. You take care of yourself. And if somehow Sasha Banks or Naomi do see this, which they won't, I just want you to be happy. That's all I care about. I know. What a cheesy idiot. Goodbye.